Breaking news. Poles are role models for their assistance to the Ukrainian people. Daily newspaper in Bosnia. Despite the tumultuous past between the two countries, the Polish show of support for the Ukrainian people should serve as an example. It's hard to think of anything that would irritate Russian President Vladimir Putin more, the Bosnian daily Oslobanji wrote on Friday. Poland, a country with a strong ethnic, cultural, and historical homogeneity that traditionally looks with suspicion on foreigners, was the first to come to the aid of the millions of Ukrainians who fled to the West. The newspaper claimed that nearly 200,000 Ukrainian children attend Polish schools, and that many Ukrainians have started businesses in the country. Refugee coordinator in Roka Radoslav Michalski told Oslobanji, We all look forward to peace in Europe and wish Ukrainians a safe return home, but we understand that many of them have nowhere to return to. He goes on to say that the presence of Ukrainian refugees in Poland is viewed favorably by 90% of Poles. At the turn of the 20th century, Józef Pisudski was quoted by the Oslobanji journalist as saying, There is no free Poland without a free Ukraine. Poland and Ukraine are one in their resistance to Russian imperial ambitions, the Daily wrote, adding that they are also united in their opposition to crimes committed at Putin's behest. Difficult periods in Polish-Ukrainian history were discussed in the article, including, the Volhynian slaughter still remembered by Poles, and, the resettlement of Ukrainians carried out by the Polish communist authorities. The author also discussed the impact of the current dispute over Ukrainian grain on relations between Warsaw and Kyiv. In early May, the European Commission imposed a ban on wheat, corn, rapeseed, and sunflower imports from Ukraine as part of an agreement with Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, Romania, and Slovakia regarding Ukrainian agri-food products. The ban's original expiration date of June 5 was extended to September 15. The so-called frontier countries permit the transit of grain through their territories. The Polish Council of Ministers passed a resolution Tuesday asking the European Commission to keep the import ban in place past September 15. Poland has threatened to impose its own national ban if this does not occur. If politics is a marriage of convenience, then elections are the honeymoon. Even a hasty wedding requires at least one witness. To observe and undersign countrywide regional and local elections held in Russian occupied Crimea and four other parts of Ukraine Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson. The Kremlin once again relied on loose ideological allies volunteering from abroad, as it had done repeatedly in Russia and in freshly occupied Crimea nine years ago. In September 2022, Moscow declared a large swath of Ukrainian territory outside the control of Russian troops to be part of Russia. Voting in Ukraine on September 8-10 has been roundly condemned by Kyiv and by leading democracies, who have called it sham elections in illegally occupied lands. The European Union, EU, has issued a stern warning to Russia about the repercussions that will befall those involved in the illegal elections in Ukraine. But pro-Kremlin media outlet director Goran Simpraga, who calls himself simply a journalist and producer from Belgrade, didn't see the issue. On the Russian social network V Contacta, he posted photos of himself in Zaporizhia, claiming he had attended a meeting of international experts, alongside Ella Pamphilova, the chairwoman of Russia's Central Election Commission. A five-minute video was also published by Simpraga in which the Russian-speaking politician praised the elections, claiming, among other things, that they were conducted, according to national standards. Goran Petronievich, another Serb, sat next to him. When talking about these elections, I think that Russia is one of the few countries that is capable of organizing such elections, he said. The Ukrainian embassy in Belgrade singled out Simpraga and Petronievich as two of three Serbian nationals who had acted as observers in the Kremlin led effort to legitimize Russian elections within Ukraine's internationally recognized borders. Before his death in 2006, Slobodan Milosevic, the former Yugoslav and Serbian leader, was indicted by the United Nations War Crimes Tribunal, where Petronievich served as a judge. He also represented former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic and others at The Hague for their roles in the conflict. 
Surgeon Perisic, the third Serb, is a former advisor to Milorad Dodik, the secessionist president of the majority Serb entity of Bosnia-Herzegovina, and a close ally of Putin. In Serbia, officials led by President Aleksandr Vucic have been critical of Western efforts to punish Russia for its attack on Ukraine, and all three are notable for their support for Putin's policies or pro-Kremlin influence building in the Balkans. Two of the men are connected in some way to the Rusky Dum, Russian House, in Belgrade, an outpost of a Russian federal agency that previously focused on diaspora outreach and humanitarian work but which has instead organized and supported events seeking to justify Russia's sweeping invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. The initial report of Petronievich and Simpraga's presence in Zaporizhia was made public on September 10 by Dejan Beric a Serbian national who is currently being tried in absentia in Serbia for allegedly fighting for the Russian side as a sniper in eastern Ukraine. Petronievich and Simpraga found themselves in the hottest spot in Zaporizhia, near the front line. Beric, who now calls himself a war correspondent, told his 100,000 followers on the Telegram messaging platform. After visiting polling stations in Novoazovsk, Mariupol, and Donetsk as an observer, Philosophy professor Perisic told the Serbian news agency Cerna that he had been in East Sarajevo, a hub of Serb political influence across the inter-entity boundary line from the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo. He posted two pictures of himself outfitted for battle in a helmet and a combat vest, writing that he was on a visit to Donbass, a colloquial term for the Ukrainian regions of Luhansk and Donetsk. It's not clear within whose international framework the three individuals in question may have been posing as observers. According to the Center for Research, Transparency, and Accountability in Belgrade, a pro-democracy NGO, any Serbian observers for the OSCE's office that monitors elections, the ODIHR, would have traveled abroad on such a mission only with the consent of the Serbian Foreign Ministry. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, which only operates in response to invitations, did not send a mission to monitor the regional and local elections in Russia, which were won by President Vladimir Putin's United Russia Party, or the elections in Russian-controlled territory in Ukraine. The Serbian Foreign Ministry did not respond in time for this article to a question from RFE, RL's Balkan service about possible observer missions to occupied Ukraine. RFE, RL tried to get in touch with all three men to inquire about their observer status, but they did not respond. In a statement released on September 13, the Ukrainian embassy in Belgrade called the elections, fake elections, that were null and unrecognized by the international community. It called them another attempt by the Kremlin to legalize aggression, and described them as a bid to annex and temporarily take military control over part of the sovereign and independent European state of Ukraine. It was stated by the embassy, persons involved in the implementation of these fraudulent elections, including the leadership of the Russian Federation, representatives of the occupying administrations and electoral structures, and their propagandists, will be brought to justice. Petronievich, Simpraga, and Perisic were specifically named. It went on to say, Ukraine will also initiate the introduction of new international sanctions against those involved. Since Russia's initial invasion of Crimea in 2014, the EU has imposed 11 rounds of sanctions on the country, targeting its businesses and economy, its military, and the ability of its citizens to travel in addition to many other measures aimed at individuals it accuses of contributing to either the initial aggression or the full-scale invasion that occurred eight years later. The government of Serbia has rejected these measures and is continuing to work with Russia in diplomatic, economic, energy, security, and transportation spheres. Despite criminal legislation strictly forbidding citizens from joining foreign wars, it has appeared reluctant to jail Serbian nationals for traveling to Ukraine to fight alongside Russia-backed separatists or Russian forces, handing out suspended sentences in dozens of cases. Some of these people are said to have gone back to fighting. During the current conflict in Ukraine, Serbian nationals have previously participated in observer missions organized by Russia to endorse balloting. 